Oh, uh, yeah, so now we're at uh, 9,600 feet. This is Pinus hartwegii, which is a pretty common uh, high mountain pine in Mexico. You can see, you still got the, uh, the limestone, beautiful limestone, and you still got this scrub oak right here, pretty abundant, as well as a, a bounty of lichens right there. Got the new leaves on that scrub oak. Oh, you got the, some cat, emerging catkins as well. Some emerging flowers. It is very, very dry. Normally this mountain will get snow in the winter. They didn't get any this last winter. That's why the madrones kind of look like shit. They're kind of browning. Okay, that should be, they're evergreen trees. So they're, they're, not, <laughs> they're not deciduous trees. It's very dry, which means it's going to be very prone to wildfire. Wildfires happen very easily in dry pine forests. See that scrub oak, look at that. It's as tall as it gets. Beautiful pines too. God, it smells so good. I wish I could. Sm I wish I could share the smell with you. Nice over there. Here's that madrone flowering, but uh, kind of looking like hell otherwise. Looking like it's not trying to invest too much energy in leaves because it doesn't know if it's going to get moisture. We saw. I mean, that's actually got more leaves than we went past a bunch of them that were just brown, just no leaves at all. As the climate uh, continues to get hotter and drier, I can't help but wonder what's going to happen to these forests. Look at this beautiful blue foliage on this pine. You got needles and fascicles of five, needles and bunches of five right there, as you can see. You got that candle ready to pop off with uh, the next season's uh, leaves or needles. We got some nice composites. What the shit is going on? Look at all the wool. Huh? All those uh, flower heads emerging. Still covered, like someone covered them in that uh, cheap Halloween cobwebbing decoration. And those, uh, leaves the leaf margins are rolled over like that just coming up on a florida pine forest so nice next to that the uh, euphorbia listen to that you hear that the rustling of the wind through the pine needles i hope it's still here at the end of the 21st century and hasn't uh burned up or dried out as the climate is now as we get higher the diversity of conifers uh starts to uh broaden and here's a uh, a genus known as Abies. This is the same genus that gets sold in the Christmas tree farms and with the shit. You know, you go like in a city or you go there, they got some poor schlep, you know, uh, selling these all tied up. Well, at least the species in this genus. This is Abies, Abies viharii, V-E-J-A-R-I-I, -I, I think it's something like that. Anyway, you get the point. Well, it looks like a little red berry. Ooh, I look at a white stomato wax on the undersides of those needles. Well, it looks like a little red berry that's uh, draped in the resin. It's actually a maturing uh, microstrobolus, a pollen cone. And you can see uh, there's some old ones right there. Look at the bricks. So, you know, like most, all, all conifers are pretty much wind pollinated. You can see there's one that's basically done. Uh, it's just got a lot of resin on it too. Look at this beautiful, beautiful. I can't get over that uh, bits of resin. You can see it's just got a more upright habit too. Unlike that, uh, the Doug fir. Look what we got down here, some goddamn member of the Crassolaceae, little succulent guy. Could it be a sedum? Could it be a Veladia? Very small, just growing in the duff. So look at these right there again. Why so red? Why are those emerging microstrobolite, those emerging pollen cones, so red? And is that, uh, is that a diagnostic trait for his species? So, Alan, tell us, you probably get some good ectomycorrhizal mushrooms coming up in a pine and abies forest, right? Yeah, for sure. Both pine, uh, pinus heartwegii and abies are really good ectomycorrhizal hosts. Well, you just need some rain. So, probably when's a good time to be here for the mushrooms? Fall? Yeah, I usually fall same time as Arizona, like August, September. Because they get the summer rains. Yeah, you get a lot of bolletes, lots of porcini, lots of inosibi, all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, you can see. Look at it. Look. See, this guy's letting pollen go right now. See that? Can you see that? There's a little bit dumping out. I think I already got rid of most of it. Oh yeah, you got some caught in that cobweb right there. Juicy. Some bad gas right now, cause I was, I don't know, I was been eating beans and you know, whatever. And Alan's telling me we gotta stop at a sex shop in Galeana, you know, one of the adult bookstores. I don't even know how you say it in Spanish so I can get a cork for my ass. I don't really appreciate that comment. So there we go, look at all that uh, brown, uh, smoke in the distance that's from a wildfire speaking of the anthropocene uh there's a fire at el cielo biosphere reserve uh, which I actually went to maybe i don't know was it two or three years i forget what it was but uh it's on fire and it's a cloud forest and cloud forests aren't supposed to burn but it is 
So, uh, you know, <laughs> tell me again, we're not living in a, a time of uh, vast climate change, more so than would be going on if we not pumped the, the uh, atmosphere full of CO2. But, uh, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm done. I'm done ranting. To you. I'm just trying to filter out the fucking, you know, oversensitive grandpas, no offense. Anyone who's gonna get offended by that. You know, why do you get offended by that? It's not like I'm attacking you. I'm not, I'm not singling anybody out by name. We're all, we're all culpable. I'm guilty too. Fuck, I'm driving right now, you know? But again, it's, you need this, this, this systemic change, not just this uh, bullshit individual stuff that's like pissing in the ocean, doesn't do anything. Look at that beautiful agave right there. How about that? So, you know, this might actually be a, another species of agave. It's producing offsets. It does look a, a slightly different as well. Look at that uh, distinct margin too. Over here, we got a... Uh, a whole shit ton of that uh, succulent again. Looks like it might be a species of Crassulaceae. Mm, just little succulent bastards. When it snows, probably just covered in the snow. And uh, you can't freeze too much. It does look pretty cool though, huh? And here we got yet another species of pine. Look at the, oh yeah, look at that nice juicy cone. Look at how the bracts kind of flip up. Looks like a white pine. How many you got in there? Four, four or five needles to a bunch. Can't quite tell. Some of the five needle pines can either have four or five. Yeah, let's uh let's see you got four here. Oh look at that white stomato wax on the underside. Beautiful cone, beautiful bricks. Look at this nice fern coming up. Is it nesplenium? Oh, look at those sporangi. Look at a sori. Oh, it's just dropping. You get, look at all the leaflets on a black rackies, too. Beautiful. Hey, look, we got a species of uh, orchid, possibly a mycoheterotroph. Not in flower, but uh, you could see all those tiny, tiny seeds. Those are all the seeds right there. Could it be a corral oriza? Associating with the uh, myco mycorrhizal fungi. It's probably also associated with the oaks and whatnot. Okay, here we got a member of the Eupatoriae tribe of Asteraceae blooming right on the side of the road. Look at how glandular it is. See how shiny those leaves are? Look at those long ass styles poking out at that uh, receptacle out of, those, out of those tiny little florets. Look at those, see those long Y-shaped styles? Dead giveaway for tribe Eupatoriae. Look at the involucre, quite glandular. Look at the leaves, got a dentate margin on them, nice. Look at the Corolla lobes, too. Look, and it's just forming a little clonal colony right there. Love to get seed of this guy. Probably needs it quite cool, though. I can't imagine it ever gets too hot up here. You know, it's 90 degrees down below, right, right up here where we are. It's about, I don't know, 65, 70. What are you doing? God damn, look at his eye. Look, the bee's all hairy, too. No, excuse me, is that a bee fly? What's he doing? Look, he's sticking his little proboscis in there. Look at him go to town. Sorry I called this a bee to any entomologist in there. Don't be mad. Look at him, look at him. He's getting nasty with it, getting nasty. Oh, he's going in there. Definitely depositing pollen on those long style branches. Oh, that's nice. Look at him go to town on it. Look at him do, why you do that? How you gonna do that? And look at it, we got a little pea. Almost looks like an astragalus, but not quite. Odd shape for the banner wings and keel. Look, the wings are out. They're out, they're poking out laterally. There's the keel. The foliage is fuzzy as hell and pinnate, of course. Look, there's more of that the succulent. Oh, it's juicy. Look at look how good it looks up here. The higher you get. And then up here we got a species of uh, Archithobium of mistletoe going off on the uh, in the, the true mistletoe family, the Viscaceae. Going off on uh, this pine. Look at those odd leaves. You get where the, where the fruits that are. Those are the fruits right there. Archithobiums can violently dehiss. They can violently shoot their seeds off, and it's all sticky and gelatinous and what the shit. And uh, you know, one out of every maybe hundred is going to land on another tree branch, germinate, tap into that uh, vascular tissue, tap into the xylem and the phloem, and uh, start doing its thing. Not weighing the tree down too much, but you know. If you get the areas like near LA, like the mountains outside of LA where there's a lot of pollution and uh, the climate's drying, a lot of the pines are actually getting really overrun with the mistletoe. They just, they can't, it's, it, be, it becomes less of a tolerance 
and more of a, a, a detrimental parasitism. What are you doing up here? Are you a cow? Huh? You got to put some meat on those bones. There's not a whole lot for you to go after, huh? Look at that. Oh, poor bastard. For the first time in my life, I actually feel bad for a cow. All right. Take it easy, guys. See you later. Okay, now we're at the 10,500 feet. Look at this tiny little pea. Another little, tiny little pea. A purple pea flower with the uh, banner wings and key. Look at that nice. Kind of lancy little leaves. And another little daisy. Looks like it might be in a ridge around. And look at these uh, pines. An endemic pine. Pinus comanicola. A little dwarfed uh, pinion pine growing with the agaves and a pinus hartwegii. And a bark lianthuson with the shit. We also got a little dwarfed potentilla. Rosaceae is the family here. Five petals. Look at the inside of that perianth, though. Very beautiful. Clawed petals. Tapering. Uh, very narrower. Very much narrower at the base of those petals than, uh, than uh, they are at the distal end. Kind of low to the distal end. Look at that. Hairy calyx. Hairy sepals. Many sepals. Hairy leaves. What the shit. Many stamens. God, it seems like all the time Alipas must be on fire. Look at all that smoke back there. I could smell it. Oh, living in the Anthropocene. How many times you got to say it? So let's look at this pine. It is a pinion pine. You got that agave just going off. Either Gentry or Montana. I still can't tell the difference between them. But I do notice this is putting out a lot of pups. Look at those needles. God dang. Look at a god dang. Look at it. Five needles. Short needles. Needles in a fascicle of five. There's the candle, quote unquote. Next season's growth. And you can see she's got this kind of like crumholst habit. Kind of growing windswept. Windswept on the side of the mountain up here. None of them getting too tall. Oh, we got a nice species of lupin too. Too bad it's not going off yet. Maybe we'll find one in a warmer area. It's a little bit farther along in a phenology. Palmate leaves on that lupin, and of course there's that flower spike, kind of looking like a dahlia before those bracts open up. Ooh, before those uh, sepals open up. Sepals, then you got those purple bracts. Look at it, just growing like a little shrub. A little bush. Ooh, I feel kind of winded. There's a little bit less oxygen up here at the 10,500 feet than there is down below. Look at a massive flower spike and agave. Look at it, ooh, it's going off. Look at that. we go here's a species of buckwheat look at that there's the old uh, inflorescences up there there's those leaves just forming a little colony look kind of yellow indumentum on the other side holy shit love to catch it in flower look at that that <laughs> that's fucking insane that's nuts the hummer was just hanging out but we freaked them out i think we drove them away look at that massive bastard massivebastards.com how much you think that weighs it's got to weigh I don't know, upwards of 1,200 pounds at least. God. I don't, you know, I don't even know what to say. Look at those massive bracts just subtending those flowers. Look at it. Holy shit. Holy hell. So much sugar being put up, and there's going to be thousands, tens of thousands of seeds. So you could see how these things do so well. Well, what'd you call it? Coleotrichium? Where's that at? It's a fungus? Oh, it's an Ascomycete fungus. Is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. But it doesn't kill the plant. It's just kind of opportunistic. Well, no, I guess, it's, I guess it's on these, too. Yeah. But it's a native fungus. A native Ascomycete. God damn. <laughs> That's... That's crazy. Look at that. Ah! Oh! How much nectar behind every purple bract. You know, if you had x-ray vision, I wonder what the I wonder what the ground would look like. How many how big is the root? What's the roots look like? Because this is all one plant right here. 
Where was that? I just seen a nice, oh yeah, look, we got a nice little Miriaptris there too. How about that? Who's that guy? Yeah, see, there's that fungus. There's the Ascomycetes. See, like nice little brown rings. Just like a skid mark. Well, I guess who is, not, never mind, disregard. Oh, look, we're getting closer to the top, almost to 12,000 feet. Got some nice cloud cover now. It's no longer hot as balls. Look down here at this uh, looping going off. Oh, yeah. You actually got the uh, style and the anthers, too, poking out of that. It looks like the style's pushing the uh, pollen out of that keel. Holy shit. Hairy stems, hairy pedestals, and uh, there's all those stamens popping up. Banner wings and keel. Distinct shape to the uh, banner wings and keel. And then there's those, uh, there's all those bracts, the fuzzy little bracts up top, and it's maturing in fluorescence, immature flowers at the top. Now, as we go further up, now we're at about 11,500 feet, we notice a change in uh, lith lithology here. You could see it's all this talus mudstone, this crumbly mudstone, probably from the Jurassic. Looks like we got a weird pea right there. And uh, it's just slowly eroding out the walls. And you can see the cloud cover is uh, quite extensive now, but you still got the agaves over there in the background going off. Okay, getting kind of close to the top here, we got a species of composite. Looks like a uh, Hymenoxus. Another rare high elevation composite, member of the Asteraceae from Northern Mexico, Hymenoxus insignis. Look at those narrow phyleries right there. Look at it. Look at the involucre on it. And uh, look at this lacy foliage, an herbaceous perennial coming coming up uh, from that uh, rhizome there. It's pretty chilly too. Now, as the climate warms, I can't help but wonder where many of these high elevation plants are going to go. Oh, we got a member of the carrot family up here, a member of uh, APAC. Ooh, look at that! Look at those! Look at those umbels! Look at the leaves! Almost looks like an angelica. There's the tiny flowers. Touch my stylopodium. That cam. There's those uh, ovaries. You can see the flowers already done on this. A lot of cool carrots when you get to the uh, higher elevations. Almost at the alpine uh, elevation. Almost where you know where the trees basically top off. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. There's there's a nice uh, little succulent, but that's a species of Valadia right there. Crassulaceae's the family on this guy. You could see uh, the uh, inflorescence from uh, last year. Just coming up on the cracks in the limestone. Look at the pigmentation on that too. Ah. Then over here, we got a nice species of Aquilegia with those nectaries. Uh, those uh, petals act in his little nectaries. There, look at that. For the hummingbird pollination, nice. All those stamens. Ranunculaceae the family on this guy. There's those tiny, tiny leaves. Uh, Mexican columbine. Nice uh, alpine Mexican columbine. Then growing out the rock wall, we got this tiny little mustard. Tiny little brassica with all the hairs on the, on the uh, leaves. Leaves in a rosette. There's those four petals. There's the distinct brassicaceous sepals. Just growing right out of a limestone rock wall. Okay, now we're quite high up. It's very cold. We're almost at 12,000 feet. You can see we're just beneath the clouds looking out over that base. I think that's something. Here's that uh, Pinus culminicola over here. And uh, here's uh, what appears to be an evening primrose. Onagracy. It's an onagrad. Look at that. Look at those. You know those sepals anywhere, wouldn't you? It's open. I guess it's not open too early. Open just not. Yeah, look at that viscin thread, like cobwebby pollen. Viscin threads. The pollen occurring in viscin threads. Another synapomorphy for the, uh, a lot of the uh, onagrads. We got a species of juniper over here, not getting too big. Looks quite distinct. Look at that. Look at those scales over there. How about that? Staying kind of dwarfed. Staying kind of crumholtz. You could see it's just uh, forming a little, a little, uh, Almost a mat right there. Cow shit, of course. The cows are fucking up the habitat, just like they do in the United States. And very chilly, and lots of lichen. Look at all that nice limestone, though. Look at all that nice uh, early Cretaceous, late Jurassic limestone. Okay, so we now we stop. We got a species of ribes up here, okay, a species of gooseberry. Grossillariaceae is the family. It's not going off, but it's cool to see it, because it's, you know, variations on a theme. That's all this is about. 
Oh, shit. What do we got up there? Look at that. Growing right out of the goddamn rocks. Jake's freaking out. I don't know what he's upset about, but it don't matter. It's another species of potentilla. Look at it. Just coming right out the rock. Growing right out the rock with the yellow flowers. Oh, shit. I'm already falling down. Look at that. Sepals by the rosaceae is the family. Look at how look at how woolly that is though. Adapted to the higher elevations and the arid climates. Let's get a money shot of those sepals. Go back in there. Oh, uh, look, you got the red red sepals coming right out of the goddamn limestone. There's, you know, the higher you get, the more amazing stuff you see, the more variations on a thing. Oh, euphorbia be many. Oh, oh. Then uh, right here we got that uh, species of ribes in bloom. There's the flowers right there. Grossillariaceae, again, is the family on that one. It's chilly up here. Obviously very uh, tolerant of the uh, snow. There's that potentilla again. Oh, shit, we got a nice mustard up here. Nice mustard, nice member of the brassicaceae. Hey, look at the four petals. Look at those uh, cup-shaped sepals. Tito's freaking out back in the background. Can you hear that? Tito, we're going to keep moving. Don't worry, this dog just wants to run. He just wants to run. And there's the uh, foliage on it, guy. Variations on a theme. Okay, so we're almost near the top. They got the Doppler over there. They got Tom Skilling in his hot dog stand. And looking down here, look at this weirdo we got. We got a dwarf Castilea. What the shit? Look at that. Barely, how tall? It's barely an inch tall. There's And there's quite a few of them. That's insane. That's wild. And who's this little apiaceous bastard? Little carrot down there, too. Look at a little carrot. Oh, it's, I'm very cold. It's very, very cold up here. Well, it looks like potentilla leaves right there. You got your lupins just waking up. Now, who's that guy? How about that? You look at that little dwarf uh, paintbrush. Or or bank casey just popping up all over the ground right there. How's it do it? How does it do it? How does it do it? Probably got a wealth of really cool stuff here in July once it gets warm enough. That's the Senecio carnarensis, I believe. Gets much taller than that, upwards of two or three feet. See, there's there's a bunch over there. You got the pine all dwarfed, crumholtzed, pinus culminicola. So I just I just want to know what it's parasitizing. What is this paintbrush parasitizing? I don't see the potentilla anywhere in there. It's probably just parasitizing this grass. And indeed, sometimes, you know, native plant nurseries, if they're growing various species of paintbrush of castilea, they've got to they've got to sow a grass seed in the same pot if they're germinating seeds. So that the uh, paintbrush has something to parasitize. Look at that guy. Got a perennial root down there. Goes how God knows how far deep, probably five or six inches, maybe. Kind of squishy like a yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe like a quarter of the diameter of my pinky. Well, I'm uh, taking a leak right now. I guess it's a good spot to end it. Look at the sun coming through the clouds. It's quite idyllic. Is it not all that water vapor? Is it water vapor or smoke? It's probably water vapor. Looking out there. Jesus Christ, we're high up. And it is freezing. Look, you get the Pinus harwegii down there. Pinus culminicola right there. Just forming little colonies. How many earthquakes did it take to get uh, what was the floor of the ocean 140 million years ago up to an elevation of 12,000 feet? You know, ge geology gives you a context for everything, doesn't it? Well, I guess that's all I got for you tonight. Uh, you got the lupin coming up. Could use a little bit more moisture, but again, they get summer rain. So uh, anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Why don't you have a good rest of your uh, evening, and uh, go ahead and uh, go fuck yourself. Bye. Get out of the road. Hey, get out the road, dummy. God, they're dumb as a brick. Let's go. Get out of the road. Tito. Little jack out, jackal. It's, it's, you want to let Tito, Tito do it? Let Tito Tito's do it. Job. Okay, Tito, Tito. Do it. Tito, go get him. Get him. Get him. Get him, Tito. Ah. Go get him, Tito. Go get him, Tito. Get him out of there, Tito. Get him out.